yeah so it took me maybe three months to get through the entire uh clinique face soap i thought it was really good <sighs> oh let's just take that from the top okay so welcome back to my channel my name is Nika, and this is hi black girl which is my channel but a little rebranded so essentially what we're focusing on now in 2020 and beyond is keeping it cute and securing the bag which means i make blogs about beauty and about finance boop, boop. um and in today's video as you could tell from the title maybe if you clicked on it uh we are going to be talking about this Clinique liquid face soap. My bottle is hella empty. I loved this soap and we're gonna go into a detailed review in this video. So essentially I'm gonna be breaking down three things. First, we're gonna be going through a brand overview of Clinique, what products they make and you know, how they even got to the status that they did as a global beauty mogul company thing that makes a lot of money every year. And two, we're going to be breaking down the ingredients because me personally, I've been really getting, getting into clean beauty, like what's actually in my skincare ingredients that I'm putting on my face every day. Half the time, we don't le read the label. So, you know, I'm here to read the label for you. So we're going to go over a couple of ingredients that's in the soup and then we're going to wrap it all up little bow just with my final thoughts on this product if I will be repurchasing um, and you know where you can get it so without further ado oh wait wait there is a do did you uh, subscribe 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 just go ahead go ahead click that button oh I'll, I'll wait it's free and it really helps me so I feel like you should do that for me because I'm making this video for you so subscribe oh you did it okay great <laughs> now we can move on without further ado let's jump right into this Clinique facial sense this Clinique liquid face soap review So this face soap retails for about $18.50. You can find it literally anywhere at Macy's, Sephora, Bloomingdale's, what what have you. It's a prestige brand, meaning that it is sold at all re major retailers that also sell expensive things. I said $18.50, but I did not pay $18.50. I found this bad boy at Marshall's for like $14, maybe $15. So that is why I decided to pick it up. It's Honestly, like when I first heard of Clinique, I thought it was like a brand for old ladies, but I was wrong. One time this girl, my roommate's friend who like would super annoyingly leave her stuff on my side of the sink. Don't you hate when people do that? I'm like, you're not even my guest. Why are you leaving your stuff in my drawers? Like that's weird. Anyway, so she left her little travel bag and I saw the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Lotion and I was like, mm, I'm gonna try a little bit of this lotion because you know, you left your stuff in my stuff and I'm just gonna use that. So I used some of the lotion and it was like amazing. So it piqued my interest in Clinique and I decided to pick up the skin, this facial soap when I saw it at Marshall's for $14. Did I mention I did not pay full price? Never pay retail, ladies. We're keeping it cute and securing the bag. You don't need to pay full price for your beauty products. Not, not in 2020. That's not what we're doing here. So, so Clinique essentially is really known for their uh, clinical formulas. That's essentially where the name Clinique comes from. Um, and essentially, they are very, very invested in making sure that all their formulations are clinically proven and targeted to heal, like or battle or help you, you know, with all your other skincare needs. So, fitting... This face soap actually comes in three different formulations. One for normal skin, one for dry skin, and then... Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here. 
um, so don't mind me. I actually wrote all of this up on my blog already, so if you don't want to watch this video and you would rather just read all the content that is in this video, you can just hop on over to my blog, highblackgirl.com. I'll link it down below as well. But essentially, as I was saying, this comes in three different formulations, one for very dry skin, one for normal skin, and then the third one for oily to combination skin. I picked up the dry combination skin, which now that I'm realizing that, that is not my skin type. Let's move on to something that really matters. So the number one ingredient in this, the number one ingredient in this is water, which is essentially what you want to see in most of your soaps is water being the first ingredient. The ingredients are typically listed in order, or they're not typically listed in, they're required by law to be listed in order of most concentrated to least concentrated. So. The number one ingredient is going to have the most concentration of this ingredient in it and then the number last ingredient will have the least concentration within the formulation so always good to keep that in mind being that number is number water is number one that means water is the largest ingredient in this soap which is definitely what you want to look out for when you are buying any sort of cleanser cleansing product it should definitely be uh you know mostly water unless it's something that you dilute but usually you don't so after water we have a whole bunch of surfactants and so basically what surfactants are chemicals that are formulated to remove dirt oil makeup etc from the skin so that's typically found in cleansers so no surprise here but one ingredient that should alarm you is the sodium lorithic sodium sodium lorithic sulfate say that three times fast some brands like honest beauty are like we do not use this, we don't believe in it, we think it's too harsh, etc, etc, etc. While other brands like Paula's Choice view this ingredient as okay and totally necessary. So pick your poison. Uh, this brand Clinique obviously thinks it's an okay ingredient, but other, you know, vegan and uh, more, you know, clean beauty brands don't agree with that. So. I'm just telling you the information. I didn't make any of these rules. <laughs> There's a lot of chemicals in this. So the next one is Lordamilibantain, which is another chemical surfactant. Uh, There's another one, Cocomadhydroxylantain, another chemical surfactant. Uh, the fifth ingredient is sodium chloride, which is salt. So that's a great natural ingredient. It's typically used in clean beauty and skincare products, generally just to thicken the formulation of cleansers, because uh, I guess all these chemicals are very liquidy because they're sulfactant. So there is salt in this, which is a great natural ingredient. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> uh, there's T-cocoglacolatamate, uh, which is another sulfactant. Butun glycol, um, another, oh, actually, sorry, it's not a surfactant, it's actually an alcohol that's safe to use on the skin, according to sources, um, yeah, but the ingredient that I'm the most excited about is that there is, um, aloe vera leaf juice in this, so maybe that's why it's green. Aloe vera leaf juice is really great for the skin. It helps uh, with any inflammation. It helps reduce uh, irritants on the skin like rashes, things of that nature. So that's always a really great ingredient to look for in skincare. Um, and then the last ingredient, number 10, because I only looked at the first 10 because no one has time to look at, you know, 23 million 100 ingredients. Um, so yeah. So the 10th ingredient, which I really, really wish 
was up a little higher on this list is uh, Saw Pomelo Fruit Extract, which is very similar to aloe vera juice. It has the same kind of cleansing properties. This is also uh, an ingredient that's used in a lot of herbal medicine for like internal stuff. So it has amazing topical properties as well. Um, such as reducing inflammation, similar to aloe vera juice, and uh, you know, a mouse directed to clean the skin. So, good things here. Great, yeah, so out of the first 10 ingredients that I looked at, there was number one, water, which was natural, super great. Number five, salt, also natural, super great. Number nine, aloe vera juice, which is amazing, great for, you know, reducing inflammation in the skin. And then number 10, salt palm, salt palmetto fruit extract, which is also really great for reducing inflammation on the skin. So out of the first 10 ingredients that I looked at, there was water, salt, aloe vera juice, and bloop, bloop, salt palmetto. That's four. I can count. That's four ingredients that are natural, naturally occurring, naturally derivative, and then six chemical ingredients that are not natural. The choice is yours, girl. The choice is yours. So let's just jump into how I felt after using this entire bottle of Clinique face soap. Do, 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 do. So it took me about three months to get through the entire bottle of the Clinique face soap. I really think it was really I truly honestly think that was a really good product uh, there's not as many natural ingredients as I would like but Clinique is not a brand that prides itself on being you know natural skincare or anything of that nature they do not ascribe to like the whole clean beauty trend and movement they're very much a brand that's rooted in clinically based ingredients like looking to find the most effective combination for your skin and so that leads to some chemicals being in their products, which is completely, completely, totally understandable. I had amazing, great, clean, clear skin while using the Clinique Fake Soap. Honestly, this this brand, this line, isn't even for their acne solutions. They have an entire line entitled Acne Solutions that deals with acne, but while using the soap, I saw a dramatic reduction in my acne. This is also around the time where I started getting into my skincare routine and actually washing my face twice a day because I was not doing that for a while. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely want to say like I went from having breakouts like every week to only having hormonal breakouts like during my week at, during my period and maybe like, you know, a few days before and after my period. So that really is like super game changer for me. If I were not super concerned about all the chemicals that are in there would i repurchase this probably uh but now that i'm kind of leaning into clean beauty and really getting into you know chemical free stuff i'm gonna say no for now i'll leave this in the back burner maybe in the future i will pick it back up again but even more towards the, like the financial side of this it's, it's a an expensive product uh, but I thought it was worth it based on the results that I got so if you're looking for a new face soap definitely give this a try um, and yeah girl I got more reviews coming so you might as well go ahead and subscribe if you made it all the way to the end of the video uh, my name is Naka once again you can follow the high black girl community on Instagram at high black girl and you can read all about you know my reviews and stuff on my blog to be completely honest I blog a lot more frequently than I make YouTube videos but trying to you know get back on the horse and make more videos for you guys so So hopefully, yeah, I will be linking all the information, all the research that I did down below. And hopefully you guys subscribe and I'll see you next week with a new video. Also, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm back home and Ducky is back with us too. So it's great over here. Stay cute and stay safe during Corona. Bye, y'all. <laughs>